Hey guys, so uh, we're back with some new content. So uh, we've been playing some of the One Piece uh, trading card game that just came out this month. And we went to a local tournament and we won the tournament. So we got the winner's pack. Um, so pretty excited to share this with you guys. Hopefully we pull something good from it. I think all the cards in, that you can get from this pack are equal in value, but uh, we'll see what we get. Um, and also the our local store, um, card store, uh, they were nice enough to actually uh, put in one of these uh, Romance Dawn box toppers um, as part of our prize. So uh, if you don't know, this is something, this is a promo pack you can get from just uh, opening a booster box. Um, and I think they were handing out the booster packs from a box as a participation prize and they had a box topper um, left over so they just kind of gave this out so uh, thank thanks to them uh, as well so let's get started by opening the box topper see what we can get there's some pretty cool cards that you can get from these box toppers uh, one of them being the perona that looks very nice so let's see. I think it's a green card. Yeah, me, I saw so. green. But these things are hard to open. <laughs> Alright. Let's see what we got here. Is it Perona? I saw blue too. Oh, maybe it's Perona. Oh, it is! Okay, cool. <laughs> Very nice. So I was actually looking to build a Dolphin Mingle deck, and uh, this would go nicely. She looks very cool when it's when the art is full blown. Like, very cool. Nice. Let's put that aside. And then we'll open the normal um, tournament pack. So this is a tournament pack that you get for being top 8 at our level. So. Yeah, I placed 10th, so I, we didn't get a second one. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. You can get one next time. Oh, and we got the Luffy promo. Very nice. So he's the guy on the pack art there. So very cool. Mm -hmm. And without further ado, this is the winner pack. Let's see what we can get. <laughs> I'm honestly happy winner with stamp, eh? any. <laughs> Looks blue, but blue? I thought the Perona looked green, okay. and it turned out to be Perona. So but if it's blue, then it could be Law. That would be pretty cool. Cause, is that law? Yeah. Let's see. Hopefully, I didn't bend the coin. And it's <gasps> Law. Okay, cool. Winner Law. Very nice. Sign. You'll, you gotta <laughs> I got I gotta play the winner <laughs> law. Yeah. So the deck that I actually uh, won with was a blue deck. So I'll be posting a profile, um, maybe in this video or another video. We'll see. But yeah, here, this is the blue winner law. Very cool. All right, and here we have the list that I went undefeated with on my vocals. I'm playing model blue crocodile. So I think Crocodile is a pretty underrated leader right now. I know if people are playing blue, like blue is a pretty unpopular color to be in with the, in this meta right now. But um, and if they are playing blue, they're probably playing Doflamingo. But I think Crocodile has a lot of potential. So his leader ability lets you go uh, Dawn minus four, so you can um, basically use your rest of Dawn, so you can play a card for like, you know four cost. And then use those rest of dawn to balance one of the, uh, your opponent's um, characters back to their hand. So typically, you're bouncing stuff like their high, higher cost blockers, like um, you know Boa Hancocks, or like Queen back to their hand, or even just like a chopper if you're just pushing for damage. Um, so it's not something you want to do early on mid game. If you do it like early on in the game, you're probably going to fall behind because the dawn minus four is pretty heavy. And you don't have a way to, um, you know, get those dons back uh, quickly with purple. So, but late game it's just crazy. Once you've established a board, you just have you know a bunch of pacifistas swinging at your opponent, and then you just keep bouncing their blockers back to their hand every single turn. It's uh, pretty devastating for your opponent. Um, so I think Crocodile it has you know some potential, and um, it really counters some of the decks. Um, I'll go over what decks I play later, but uh, yeah, it, I think against certain matchups, Crocodile is very favored in those uh, in those uh, games. So let's 
So, okay, I'll go over the rest of the cards now. So next we have the one cost law. Not much to say there is just a cheap blocker. He can protect your life, protect your characters. Um, and he's also a seven warlords, which he can get back with get the Moria. So law is very good. Um, this is the two cost Alvida. So Alvida, I almost never play her as a character. I'm just using her as a 2k counter, and for that purposes, she's very good. Um, and then we have four of the blocker Dot Domingo. So this is a card that I've seen some lists run three of in Crocodile, just because you know his ability is not super relevant in terms of um, for Crocodile, where like you look at the top five cards of your deck and um, you know put them back in any order, or put them in the bottom. Um, it, it's not as important as for the Doflamingo leader because they actually want to put the cards that they need to trigger Doflamingo's ability to uh, summon a character from the top of their deck. Um, but at the same time, I feel like with this deck, I don't have enough early game plays that I can make. And um, the main card that I always want to see is Sentamaru. So if I don't have Sentamaru in my hand already, I can at least play Doflamingo, filter my next few draws, and make sure that I have a higher chance of seeing Sentamaru when I do need him. So I think Doflamingo is very good. His, also, his other traits for being a blocker is also very relevant. And the fact that he's a 4k um, blocker means that he can block uh, things like Shanks, which I think is becoming pretty popular now. So those are all things that pretty good for the card uh, on its own and um, him being 4k means you can just attach one on him and do a swing at the leader if you need to do that um, and also if, at worst he's just a 1k counter and he's a 7 warlord so you can bring it back with him more. so I really like Doflamingo the 3 cost blocker so I'm running for him and next card is the 3 cost uh, Sentamaru so Sentamaru is definitely the star of the show um, really, the reason why people play Doflamingo, the leader, is that you know you can use his ability, keep getting bodies on the board every single turn, um, at the cost of you know just one don because you're attaching two dons to your leader to swing with it. So it's you know you're already getting value out of those dons, and for the cost of one don, you're just bringing a character. So we, so this deck needs some sort of advantage. Um, to keep up, and Sentamaru is definitely the way. So you can attach one Dawn to Sentamaru and rest two Dawns, and then summon uh, Pacifista from your deck. And it's it comes in untapped, which is the really good part. And also, you don't have to tap Sentamaru when you use him as well. So the typical play is when you have six Dawn, you play uh, Sentamaru for three, attach one Dawn, rest two. So that would be a 6 cost play to get Sentamaru and a Pacifista from your deck. And of course we're running 4 Pacifistas, I think that's pretty standard. You want to make sure you have as many Pacifistas in your deck as possible. So if you do get to, um, you know, allow Sentamaru to live, you know, they didn't tap it or use Jet Pistol on it to kill it, um, you can use his ability again next time. And the fact that you can do this effect every single turn is just very very powerful i would say if you get a second Sentamaru effect off you're in a very good position to win the match and really the um best performing card i and this is something that i was kind of hesitant to include in my deck but i was very happy with is the one uh, copy of the blocker uh pacifista um, you can run more if you want, but I felt like one was just enough because typically you do want to just uh, summon the six cost pacifista because he has more power. It's easier for him to swing into your opponent's cards and then, um, you know, put the pressure on. And um, having that 1k power actually makes the difference. But the blocker or the, uh, the other pacifista, it comes in up a lot and when I played this list without the blocker pacifista I felt like oh there's these all these different scenarios where um, I could have had him and it would have made a difference um, but I didn't have him in my deck and having him in the deck um, 
really helped me win. So he can do stuff like block uh, you know, shanks. And just having a blocker there forces your opponent to play it differently. And, um, you know, him being a 5k means you can also swing with him if you need to, to push damage as well. So um, the downside of him is that he's not a 1k counter um, as opposed to the other pacifista. But, you know, and if you do draw him, obviously, like, you can't get him off of Centimaru. But, you know, looking at those things aside, I think playing just like even if you do draw him, playing him as a four cost five K blocker is also not that bad. And that's something that I had to kind of get over. Like I didn't want to play him because oh I'm scared of drawing him or if he's in my life, like you know, that really sucks. But uh, I feel like just having him as an option just makes the deck, you know, like much much better because you just have more options really. and that's kind of what I wanted to uh, focus this deck. So next we have the four um, Gecko Moria. Gecko Moria is really good. Um, the best play you can make is Gecko Moria bring back your Mihawk, who's a seven Warlords, and it's a two gate counter, so that provides a lot of tempo and uh, advantage. And also, if you need to, you can just go. If you're going first and you have five down, you can go Gecko Moria bring back your Law, play Law, and that's your turn five play. It's also very good. So um, yeah, Gecko Moria. Uh, if you don't have, like, you know, any better play, he's a 4 cost 5k, which is still pretty good stats. You can swing into your opponent's uh, board. Um, next we have the 3 cost Jinbei, or 4 cost Jinbei, sorry. <laughs> the Jinbei is very good. Um, he can bottom a 3 cost from your opponent uh, back to the bottom of your deck, so you're saving this card for, you know, stuff like their Nico Robins or Kikus. I really tend to really hold on to this until I can hit those lower, uh, those high end targets with Jinbei. And, um, you know, sometimes if you're pushing for damage later, you can bottom one of the blockers as well, um, which is really good. And he also has a neat on trigger ability, which can come up sometimes. Um, and to teach. Um, so you could run more Jinbeis and not as many teach, but I feel like some. In some cases, Teach is, you know, um, just the same as Jinbei, if not better, because he, him being a 4k means that you can actually pressure uh, for damage in the late game. Um, so if they have, you know, in the late game, if you're just trying to push for damage, you can use Teach's ability, send back a chopper or a beige back to their hand, and then, you know, it's... Kind of the same thing as Jinbei because those blockers you can't really play or use them as counters anyway. So um, yeah, I think Teach is very good and him being a 4k body just allows you to push for that extra damage if you're looking to uh, end the match. And then we have the 4 cost uh, Dracula Mihawk, 2k counter, not much to say about that. I don't think I, same thing as with the Alfita, I've never played him, but at least with this card I feel like he's not too bad to play if you have nothing better to do. Um, just a 4 cost 5k body, being able to trade into your opponent's stuff is not too bad. Um, and then we have the 3 Virgos. So Virgo is very good, you know, I, this is kind of like the backup plan if you don't have Centimaru. Um, with this deck, you really want to aggressively mulligan to find your Centimaru, but if you don't get Centimaru, you can play Virgo and he's... A really beefy body and he can swing into your opponent's uh, cars very well and pressure for damage as well so um, he's kind of like your backup plan um, and if you get him on board it's just very hard for your opponents to deal with him being 7k you can't just pistol it and uh, yeah and next we have the one six cost Trafalgar law um, so this is a car that it's kind of debatable. I honestly haven't really been able to use his ability too much. I have been, um, I've mostly just been playing him as a six cost 7k, which isn't great. And you can't argue that, you know, you can just play Virgo, uh, like a fourth copy of Virgo here, or even a third cost, uh, third copy of Doflamingo. Uh, the seven cost off Flamingo instead but i think i just like having that option like if this <laughs> effect ever does come up if your opponent has six cards in their hand 
you play them make them draw one of their life cards um if ever it does come up i think it's great um and really like i said i just want to have more options so i don't want to max out on any one of these just being able to depending on the situation i can play either of them um you know it gives me a lot of flexibility so yeah and playing it as a six cost you know 7k is not too bad it's able to pressure and a lot of my matches i feel like that extra dawn doesn't really matter too much so, like me having to pay the extra dawn here or saving the extra dawn actually that's not true like i think the difference between 6k and 7k is actually pretty huge because 7k if you're at 10 dawn then you can't play any of your four costs and as you guys can see i have a lot of four costs so um, him being six, that gives you the flexibility of playing him plus one of your uh, four cards, which I think is pretty good. And next we have the seven cost Doflamingo. He's pretty good, um, but I feel like in this current meta, he's not as um, good as he could be, just because there's so many on play effects, so many rush cards, um, and him bouncing your opponent's card back to their hand isn't impactful enough for what he is and like i just mentioned if you're playing um the seven cost off of Mingo, that's pretty much your entire turn kind of like the best thing you can do is hold up one of your event cards or maybe play a law or a three cost off of Mingo. But at that point i think you probably already play some of those so um yeah him having that one extra cost actually does make a lot of the difference and this isn't something that you want to see a lot of you know like if you play one of him on curve you know that's great but otherwise i find that you're not going to be able to like you know if you draw two or three of them you're if you play one you're probably not going to be able to play the other ones just with how the game typically goes um yeah but we do max on on the nine cost uh mihawk Mihawk is a card that you definitely want to see because if you do get to play him and you know your opponent's not going to kill you on the next turn, he will just win you the game. Um, if you can bottom one of their higher cost cards and then be able to attack with them, you're probably going to be able to um, push for damage because nine uh, nine K is very hard to counter. They will need an event card, and even if they have an event card, they have to discard another card just to stop him which is pretty good because typically when you want to use the event cards you want to just use the event card and stop one attack but he forces two cards which is pretty pretty powerful and he can also trade into your opponent's cards very well so um that's why we max out on him because when you do play the mihawk uh it really feels like you're going to win the game whereas doflamingo it's typically your opponent still has a chance to come back kind of thing. Um, and then we run the event card, so I run six, uh, four Love Love, and two Overheat. Love Love's very good. Um, you typically just want to play out your hand um, and you know counter as much as possible, and then use Love Love to draw cards off of it. And it lets you stay alive against things like red, and then even against purple, you can just hold up these event cards and. You know they think you know they go down minus some they think they can go for game but you love love and then you have some 2k counters to stop their attack and then you can swing back on the crack back which is pretty good um and then two overheat um uh, and honestly like if i had to run six if i could run six love loves i would it's just that overheat you know you can only have four copies of the card in your deck and overheat is i think the best 4k counter that's you know not love love so i'm running two over heat uh the main reason i say that is that it's bounce effect for three costs or lower um against a really good player they will play around this so you're not going to get too much value out of it because they're usually just going to swing in with their guys first before playing you know anything relevant that you can bounce back to their hand you know, they're not going to play their character first and then attack with something else so um but you know it can come up and it does have a trigger which is kind of relevant so that's not too too bad and you know i do i do want to play a good number of the 4k counter event cards just because uh late game you really do need them to kind of help you 
and stabilize and stay alive. Uh, but you don't want to see too many of these for sure. So anyway, hope you guys enjoyed the depth profile and uh, let me know what you guys thought of this format. I did it differently um, where I can display the whole deck in front of you. Um, just makes it easier for viewers, I think, just to get a whole grasp of like the snapshot without going through the entire video, you know? So let me know if you guys like this format and let me know if you guys want to see more One Piece content in the future. And uh, yeah, I'll see you guys next time. Hey guys, so I know in the video I talked about how I would show the matchups um, or talk about it and I totally forgot to do that so I'm just going to edit this in and uh, you guys can look at this cool graphic that I made. I actually did a recording of this um, prior and I realized my mic was muted so this is going to be my second take but um, yeah, as, as you guys can see my matchups, uh, there weren't a lot of variety. I played against three Zoro decks so I'm one Law. So I guess you could say I played against four red decks, um, and I really feel like Crocodile hard counters the Zoro deck. Um, and I'm not just saying that from you know this one tournament, but with the way that the games go, that your characters are just slightly stronger than um, the Zoro, uh, uh, the characters that the Zoro deck puts out. So you're able to trade into them very efficiently, and also. Um, you're not too slow. Like you're able to build up a sizable board in a reasonable amount of time. So you're not like super overwhelmed by their cards as well. So um, against Zoro, the matchup, typically they can get me down to one or two like pretty early. But from there, I'm able to stabilize. And as long as I hold up my counters, I hold up my event cards, put up some blockers. It makes them really, it makes it really awkward for them. Like in those situations i feel like the zoro deck it always feels like they're just like missing one dawn to be able to kill me you know like they're just on the cusp of victory but you're just able to um you know find that little bit of a gap uh seal it and make sure that uh you're able to you know just barely survive so that you can swing in with your 7k attackers and go for the kill yourself so um yeah i you know, if you're playing uh, Purple Kaido and you're getting sick of being rushed down by Zoro all the time, you can give uh, the Crocodile deck a shot. Um, and my the closest match I actually have was against this Law deck, and it was really, really interesting, like how the match went. And he got off to a pretty aggressive start, actually, with you know some of the rush Zoros, um, but I was able to kind of stabilize from there build up a board and similar to playing against Zoro um the the Zoro that the mono red Zoro um deck uh that I'm able to kind of stabilize early and then be able to swing with my bigger creatures and he wasn't able to get to a cost kit I think that would have really turned the tide in his favor but um he didn't quite get there uh, he didn't really have the bonnies to kind of like dig for you know his big supernovas or anything what ended up happening was that uh, he, um, he tried to go in for a game and then I just had the D2K counter so it was a bit fortunate for me um, and I was able to win on the crack pack. So yeah, those are my matchups. Um, hope you guys enjoy the video and 